Yep, she's going to do the locks for me. Only on the canals will you experience that level of kindness and generosity. In my experience, at least. Fabulous. Like it. But I must be wary of getting too cocky. We know what happens when I do that. Now a short meander to the next. There's an incredible wind coming down this canal. So far with these narrow locks, it's a bit of a lottery of which way your boat's going to go. To start with, the boat wants to go backwards. 
and then when the lock's about half full, he wants to go flying forwards. Getting a fine workout here. Was that number three? I think so. The most locks I've ever done in one day was 14, just south of Leicester. Over eight hours of an intensive workout. You really, really do have to keep your eye on the boat in these narrow locks. I suppose because of the uh, confined space and the boat is almost a perfect fit in the gap, as you let the water in, the currents will fly under the boat, hit the back of the lock, rebound and send the boat flying forward. Or for some reason it will do the exact opposite and send it flying backwards. Well, that was number four, I'm pretty sure. And what a pretty little spot. An arm here, I wonder what's in here. Oh my, a couple of working boats. Here, this is unusual. Twin locks, but well, one of them looks to have been decommissioned. Seeing as there's one lock, and I don't feel like being rushed, or feeling like I have to rush if there's a boat behind me, I'm gonna let this higher boat through and wait here for 10 minutes while I put the kettle on, I think.
unavoidable side current there. Tried my best to get over, keep the nose to the left, and then a sharp turn in, but the water just pushed the whole boat sideways. The jury's still out on the best way to do these narrow gauge locks. I think the best way is to have somebody with you. One on the boat, one doing the locks. Aye, that old lock is now acting basically as a weir to run water down and to keep the pound at the right level. Well, that was number 62, that's the fifth one I've done today. This one here is 61, followed by 60 and strangely enough 59. And then there's a bit of a gap of about, I'd say, just under half a mile. And hopefully there's somewhere to moor up there, because I think that will do me for today really. Don't want to burn myself out right at the start, do I? Number 61, but how many that is today, I, don't, I think I've lost count. Is it six? I think it's six, it must be. And some boats moored here, and there is a space here, but it's right opposite the window now. Unless there is a gap down there somewhere. It's lot number 60 for me. Hey, there's a gap by here. I wonder if I'd fit in there. Bit of a side wind, making it a bit difficult to get in. Six down, 20 to go before Harecastle Tunnel. And even though there are locks after Harecastle Tunnel, the reward is that they're all downhill.
Good morning. A pleasant enough stop here overnight, but I failed to realise it's right next doors to a golf driving range. One ball hit the boat and I could hear them hitting other boats, which wouldn't be so bad, but they're supposed to be aiming down the driving range, not hooking to the left. So somebody needs to work on their game. Ah, so this one's out of action. Fortunately, these are in pairs. Right, well it's over to the left one then, where the strong side current is. I'll probably hit it. Or maybe not. Yeah. Phew. Well, this lady here is going to do them for me. Right. I think I'm doing all right. thing I found quite surprising about this part of the Trenton Mersey is how rural and how tranquil it is. I expected mainly industry. Though I do know that when you get towards Stoke and so on it does get more built up and industrialised. Aha! Uh -huh. This lock is set and all ready for me to go in. Thank you to Keith and Ross on Narrowboat Timeless. Just helped me through the lock there. A couple of viewers. Great to meet you. Even with pairs of locks, you still get a bottleneck. More viewers. Alistair, Francesca and Pearl. I must say this second time round, I'm definitely meeting more viewers. I mean, I used to meet viewers occasionally, 
you know, especially after like my first 10 videos or so but this time round it's made made just one of those things I suppose how, how do you deal with being recognized all over the place it's how you look at it I suppose my policy is to just live in the moment deal with every situation as it comes along and engage with those around at least while you're cruising that is once you're inside and the doors are shut then it's me time This gentleman's just opened the gate for me. Good timing today. Thank you. Right, this gentleman's going to do the paddles and I'm going to keep the boat in forwards. Keep it pressed against that gate. Thank you, kind sir. That gentleman, he's retired now. In his heyday, he was transporting coal up and down the canals. Well, this is an unusual feature. Just a single lock. Well, this one was almost still empty from the previous boat going through, but you often find, due to leakage down at the top gate, the lock will start to refill itself. Gone Gooslers. People who like to stand and watch boats going through locks. Oh, I've got these two people here have uh, turned up and they're doing the lock for me. Who could it possibly be? My, my, it's Richard and Fran from Floating Our Boat. Hiya, Kevin, how you doing, mate? Very good. I don't do that for everybody, you know. <laughs> are you going far? We are heading to Middlewich, uh, which is only, what, 10 miles away now, just to get the boat out of the water, get a few odds and sods fixed. And then we're heading back down south for the boat show. <laughs> down at Crick. Uh, oh, yeah, busy, busy time at Crick, I think. Uh, we'll enjoy it now, won't we? It'll be fun. Yeah, yeah it'll we'll be have fun. Good fun. And then we're heading north, ultimately on the Lanky, where you've been for the last uh, God knows how long. Yeah, ho yeah. Hopefully, you won't get stuck there for three years. <laughs> well, who knows? It's supposed Could to be, be worse, really probably. nice, isn't it? So Could we, might, we might follow in your footsteps. Yeah. And <laughs> Lancaster, beautiful university town, and Garstang, everything you could possibly want, and a booze, which is said to out Waitrose, Waitrose. Oh, booze. really? Yeah, we like a booze. Booze. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it sounds like the place, doesn't it? Yeah. Sounds good to me. Yep, that was Richard and Fran from Floating Our Boat. Been wanting to meet up with them for a very long time. And it finally happened. Hey, See you, Fran. What a fab couple. And check out their channel, Floating Our Boat.
Yeah, that was great meeting Richard and Fran. Made my day, that. Yeah, that was a reek grand. It looks like my intel was wrong. They're not all double lux. I like it when they're already set to open. I think I'm managing to get a system together. Get the nose up against the gate, well the sill to start with. Even though there aren't always mooring dollies in a convenient spot, when you can, tie the rope to that. Give it a few turns of the ground paddle to start with, and then up to about half. And then if all goes well, you can open it up a bit more. Now a very long jaunt to the next lock. And it looks like there's a boat about to come down. Tied up just in time. Bridge 145 and lock 55 and uh, about a mile to the next set of locks but hopefully if there's a mooring this will be the last one I do today. I mean it is a Sunday after all. Last one of the day, hopefully. I'm told there's a mooring a little bit further on. That was another viewer there. Thank you very much for your help and enjoy your stop at Wheelock. Only about 14 miles remaining to Hare Castle Tunnel, but just a small matter of 14 locks to brave. As I say though, not today. Yes, I think I'm in luck.
If you are after a property, and with a view like this, it would cost a darn sight more than the price of a narrowboat. Mm. For the narrowboater, it is time to drink latte also. 